Sport. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Carlos Phoenix on the Indie Lounge, and this is a special show with a special guest. I have Steve Narvaez, also known as The Roar, as a special guest live from Orlando. Hello, Steve. How are you? What's up, guys? Hey. So um, I have been following you for a long time on Facebook, on Twitter, on your Tumblr. I mean, just about everything there is social-wise. And Thank um, you. And uh, just been enjoying your your music. And uh, so Steve is a music artist. Um, I'm going to call you the Roar from now on. My apologies. But um, so I've been following you, and I uh, just want to let the the guests, uh, the the audience, know a little bit more about you, and to get to hear a little bit of your music, and learn about what you're doing. So take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh. Obviously, my name is Steve. Uh, I've been doing music for uh, quite some time. I've had a lot of various music projects. Uh, the most recent one, which is The Fire and Reason, uh, which is what a lot of people, I guess, know me from with uh, the amazing artist Bella Seona. Um, it's been a while since I've kind of done my own thing as far as me singing and, and, and writing and um, expressing myself directly. And um, I don't know. I felt like the time was right to like for the world to kind of hear my voice again. Hence the Roar Project, which uh, you know, I guess the Roar stands for someone emitting a loud sound from their vocal region, and and that sort of sums up what this is. What I'm that I'm about to try to embark on. So um, now, yeah. um, now I, the way I got introduced, I'm trying to remember. Because it's been a number of years now. Um, yeah. I had heard a song from uh, Fire and Reason, which is your your group with Bella, mm-hmm. and um, and it was it's electronica or is that the category of the music? Yeah, that's cool. Electro, electro rock, electronica. Yeah, it's all. And I th- I found it so I don't know, uh, fresh. I mean, she's a, she's a character in herself. Um, yes, she is. You know, she's uh, what is she? Twenty two, twenty three now. Yeah, she's very young. Yeah, she's. She's very young, uh, very attractive woman, and uh, and your sound between the two of you, you're you're, you're doing the music and her doing her vocals, um, are, are very were very fresh to me. So cool. uh, then I became a fan. I started following you guys, and then I started hearing your stuff, um, picking up stuff on SoundCloud and that type of thing, and and I'm really liking a lot of the mixes you do, some of the remixes you do, um, and and I thought, you know what, this this guy is gonna just kind of move into this industry. Uh, and so what kind of things are happening for you um, getting music in, let's say, TV shows or anything like that? Is anything like that going on? Well, I mean, the fire and reason, um, you know, I guess I'll refer to it a lot because that's my has been my main gig for some time. We've had a lot of success and, and we're very fortunate that uh, our music has ended up on a lot of TV shows, uh, movies. Um, I mean, it's... It, We've we've been very fortunate where our music gets placed heavily and gets out there, and and obviously that's why a lot of people, I guess, like yourself, even know who I am. And so I will always be very thankful and grateful for everything that that project has brought me. Um, but luckily, I mean, or or, or thankfully enough, uh, one of the songs. I mean, no one has really heard the Roar stuff yet. But one of the songs, uh, it's called Emotion Thirty Two, and uh, Chucky. Uh, sorry, Chucky did a remix of it, and it's going to be featured in a movie that's going to be coming out probably by the end of the year or early next year. And it's an amazing movie. It's about these two brothers that surf off the coast of Australia, and it's um, it's going to be dope. I saw the opening scene where they use the where they use the music, and it was actually I got to say for me it was very touching personally. Because I remember exactly where I was, you know, and what what was going on when I wrote that song, and kind of to see how like another artist, you know, or you know, filmmaker in this case, takes it and interprets it and and and, and connects it with their images and and their storyline, and and it's just a fascinating process to me, uh, you know. That's very cool. Um, now, can you explain a little bit of that process where? 
So one of the things I like to focus on, particularly on the Indie Lounge, is um, there's a lot of viewers who are also attempting to get into the music industry or want to or feel that passion inside of them. And one of the things that they are lacking is the knowledge of how to get themselves out there. So mm-hmm. is there anything you can give as an insight for those who are saying, you know what, I'd like to be able to get into a movie or, or TV show or, or even just be getting their music um, ambitions? Any suggestions that you have for them? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, but like, I know it sounds crazy, not crazy, but all, all of the things that kind of have happened to us have, um, have, 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 have come on their own, so to speak. All I guess I have done or, or we have done as far as with Bella and the fine reason is just try to make like the best songs that meant something to us. I always feel like, you know, when I get inspired to make music is when, I don't hear something out there. You know, I, I try to make the music that I would want to be listening to and, and the music that I wish someone was making. Um, in turn, you know, obviously Facebook, um, SoundCloud now, all these mediums are, are a great place for, for you to like, you know, get your music and stuff out there. Um, and that's kind of how people really first heard of us, you know, with the fine reason started with MySpace and then, switched to Facebook. And like you said, the very beautiful Belle Sayona, you know, she, you see her picture and, and most people will click on it just to even check out what she's up to. And, and the fact that we had some really cool music to sort of back it up really um, benefited us. I don't know if that's answered your question. No, no, but that's I'm, fine. Um, I'm sort of just now, explaining, I guess, how... how now, on a, on a business level, um, you know, you're obviously using social media very yes. intelligently it's working out very well for you um i'm, I'm imagining you're having an Im- immense following so uh that's one two uh, i guess the, the question comes down to was this a friend of yours on, uh, that was doing the film and you just coincidentally was able no. to get your music into it okay um, so, so somebody's heard this, you or something every single placement if you want to call it that that we've gotten it's you know i'll be honest i, I wish i knew more music supervisors um we have a, this all right, pardon the interruption. We had a little bit of a fallout with our camera. So um, continue on with your... Um, what I was going to say is uh, it was actually uh, someone who knew The Fire and Reason. This guy, his name is Tony. He's from France. I've never met him. He's nice. a Facebook friend. And he um, posted something on his Facebook that his, uh, some friends of his were looking for uh, music for a film they were doing. So since, you know, we had chatted, he knew the fire and reason and he, he liked our music. I said, hey, I got this new project going on, you know, love to send you some some stuff if, you know, maybe it might be good for the movie. It's funny because he I think they mentioned it was a surf movie. And I'm like, you know, obviously my I my concept of what surf music would be, you know, was not what I was doing. <laughs> but I was like, you know what, I could kind of see this being in, you know, in, in, in involved in something that is momentous or epic or whatever i that's the thing I, I i try to write music that you know regardless of who you are what you're into you get a sense of 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 um of um of size of space you know like i i like with this project i very much want to write stuff that's like that people could sing along it's funny when i'm in the studio and and uh, my friend Jimmy, who I work with, he's like, you know, I could see a stadium full of people singing this. And I'm like, that's what I'm going for. Anyway, so I sent along to him and kind of forgot about it. And then he just kind of hit me up like maybe two weeks ago. I was like, yo, they love it. They want to use it for the opening of the movie. Nice. You know, and, 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 and it kind of just happened like that. Everything that I do is very um, organic, I guess. You know, it just kind of happens. And um, like I said, I'm very lucky and very happy and fortunate and, and blessed that you know people even give 30 seconds to listen to what i do you know okay now um what i'd like to do at this moment is play at least maybe a, a part of one of your songs is there sure. one that you want to focus on in particular well i mean we're, we're referring to uh emotion 32 uh the chuki remix so I, I i think you got it right yeah let's see that's the original but you can play it
Now, can you tell us a little bit about the song? <laughs> like inspiration, that type of thing. Uh, yeah, this this one this one's definitely gonna uh, ruffle some feathers <laughs> when it comes out. Um, I am a I am a very private person, but this song is me kind of telling my story, so to speak. Uh, you know, stuff that's happened in the last year and a half, two years. Um, the the cool story about it is is that I wrote it when Hurricane Isaac was headed to Orlando, and I was supposed to be heading to the RNC. Uh, convention, Republican National Convention, that was happening at the same time, and because of the hurricane, it got canceled. Mm. So I got stuck here in the apartment I'm staying at, and and a song came out of me. So it's kind of cool to think that if the weather had been different or a- any other kind of thing, and that song just wouldn't exist. So that's when I was that's telling weird. you about about um, if the fact that someone liked it and wanted it to be in a film. It, I'll always remember like where I was when I wrote that because you know it was such a specific um, set of circumstances. Yeah, because yeah. literally it wasn't supposed to happen. I was like dressed, and then they canceled uh, the this this trip we were supposed to take from Orlando to Tampa. And um, you know, I'm like, well, I'm home. I'm up. I might as well, you know, see if I you know work on some music. And boom. So now you're um, are you originally from Florida? No, I uh, born and raised in in, in New York. Okay, so um, so what got you to Florida? Uh, the presidential campaign. I uh, got it. Okay. Yeah, this is a battleground state. Um, for either side to win, you need Florida. Obviously, Florida and Ohio are the big battleground states, and uh, you know that's why I was deployed here to make sure that we turn Florida blue. Okay. Oh, we're not going to get into a big political uh, discussion. Yeah, exactly. I, so I, tried to, I shy away from... <laughs> no problem. No, uh, cool. Ironically enough, I've learned my lesson already. <laughs> Got it. Um, so your uh, the song is part of an EP that you're going to release? Yes. Uh, and what's the name of that release? It's going to be called the, I Am The Roar, which uh, is kind of like... I see it as a reintroduction uh, as of me as an artist to uh, the general pop... Uh, Public, I guess, because it's been uh, quite a while since anyone even heard me sing. Or the funniest thing, the the, the the coolest comment I get from people and people that even know me is like, "Who's singing?" And I'm like, "That's me." They're like, "You sing?" <laughs> They're like, "No one knows I sing." You know, I, well, since you know, I've been doing the fire and reason for about five or six years, you know, everyone knows. Kind of takes the limelight a little bit from that. <laughs> and that's fine. I'm totally cool with it. So everyone sees me more as a, you know, a producer, guitarist, whatever. And that's cool. And I'm cool with that. So people really have no idea that I sing. And that's where I come from, you know. Hey, um, I mean, uh, I, all those categories uh, are are impressive amongst themselves. So you throw in that little sing and it's like the cherry on top, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, and it's I good. Mean, I mean, you have, know, a great, you have a great I, voice. I, I do it all. You know, I, I love music. Music is, you know. That's what I am. I, I mean, I live, breathe, dream it. I mean, it's it's just constantly what I am consumed by. You know, it's 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 kind of hard to explain to, I guess, people that aren't like consumed by art or music or something yeah. like that. But it it's an it's beyond an obsession. You know, it's like it's Why? just what you think about all the time. And you know, I don't know. It's, so uh, let's let's review a little bit of uh, the type of things that inspire you. I mean, you mentioned the storm um, and 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 having to stay in a hotel, that type of thing. But uh, what else seems to kind of make you say, you know what, I want to write about this? Well, I mean, you know, uh, obviously, I write a lot from my own personal uh, experience, um, relationships, personal relationships, um, family relationships. I mean, everyone can relate to songs and music that are about relationships you know it's like we've all been there we've all fallen fallen in love we've all had our hearts broken we've all have you know not all of us but i mean i guess a lot of us felt unrequited love you know it's funny because now i you know i'm cool with it but like you know when i was first starting off in punk bands and stuff it was you know it wasn't cool to write about love and now i realize it's like you know that's kind of like a very, very much a, a universal kind of feeling and, and something a lot of people in it can relate to and stuff. And um, and it's just what I was feeling at the time, you know. I mean, 
um, you know, I went through a pretty heavy personal kind of situation and and it's taken me a while before I've been able to actually kind of translate it into, you know, words and, and, and songs, you know. So you're talking about like a personal relationship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I it's taken me a while um, for me to be able to kind of be able to be, be in a place where I can actually have some perspective and try to articulate it in a way that even though it kind of conveys like, you know, that emotion as far as like, you know, heartbreak or whatever, but it still retains some kind of like hopefulness. You know what I mean? I don't want to be like super like emo, like, you know, but, um, I don't Understand. Know. Um, all right. So let's touch upon, let's, um, let's give some information to your fans. Um, mm-hmm. now have you seen the commercial to, I think it's an F- NFL commercial where there's this little girl asking a bunch of silly little questions to a football player. And he's like, you know what? All you reporters should be asking questions like this. Have you seen that commercial? I can't say I have. All right. So the, the questions kind of come like this. And, and really, uh, as a little girl that was in the audience, um, she sees this football player and she's a huge fan. And she doesn't care about statistics. She doesn't care about the numbers. Mm-hmm. She just wants to know what his favorite color is. So favorite color. Um, I would be lying if I didn't say black. <laughs> okay, so you always, are you always dressed in black, or I, I tend to wear a lot of black. My mom gets on me about always wearing black. I've heard that one from so my mother too. So I moved to navy blue. Now, I, uh, what's your nationality, if I may ask? Uh, my parents are Ecuadorian. Okay, well, my parents are Colombian, so we have you know, we're neighbors. neighbors right? So, all right. So, second question then is, what kind of movies are your favorite movies? Oh man, um, I do love sci-fi movies. Uh Fan anything, rating. anything, Game of Thrones. We oh, were nice. talking about Star Wars earlier. I could watch, you know, Return. Of the, sorry, Empire Strikes Back on repeat. Um, anything, sorry, sci-fi and music. Because any music documentary or whatever, I will watch. Even if it's like about Tony Braxton or like Usher or like, I mean, I will watch an LMFAO documentary if it's on TV. Anything that's like music related, I just. I just watch because, you know. I was going to ask about the Justin Bieber movie, but I think I'll just pass on that. No, um, you know what? I haven't seen it, but I've been tempted. I, you know, okay, as a, a, a word of advice, um, I think every musician in the industry should watch it. Um, I'll, I'll check it out. You know, you don't have to be a fan. It's not, about, it's not really about, I hate to say it like this, it's not really about the music mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it was very inspiring in respect to especially a kid, uh, you know, where he started from and and grew into what he's become now, but yeah. the the strategies, his formula, that type of stuff. Um, can I can I can I can I confess something? Yeah, go ahead. I saw the Katy Perry movie. You know, oh, well, I, see, know I think I think it was the same producers, so the same concept, following yeah, so, that, that you know, line. I, I, a lot of I'm lessons to be learned. Watching you know a movie about a pop star or someone that's you know I'm not so yeah. Well, what did um, you think of it? Did you like it or was did you learn anything from it? The Katy Perry one. Yeah. Nah, I thought it was kind of boring. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> I like movies. I haven't I like seen it yet. Documentaries or movies or behind the scenes. The more like studio behind the scenes stuff that is in it, the mm. more I like it. Got it. More kind of, you know, because I'm a producer, I'm a musician. Like that's the kind right. of stuff I want to see. I'm also, you know, they show some road stuff or like live stuff. Like I love um, The Kings of Leon, you know, Talladega Nights. Awesome oh. movie. LCD sound system. I just downloaded that the day it came out. Like, I love that. You know what I mean? Okay. The, the shut up and play the hits. You know, so any, like, music documentary, I'm, like, all over it usually. Very cool. So any tours and plans? Um, my first plan is to hopefully win this election so I could get back to New York, which is my home base, and, and um, wrap up the CP. Uh, I think I got one more song in me. I have... Uh, a couple of remixes I'm waiting on just to put it out and then figure out how to bring it live. The live the live thing is what I really want to focus on because um, I'm sort of a hybrid, you know, like I love dance, sort of DJ music. Right. But I came up in rock. So oh, okay. I'm to figure out that, that way, mix. Was that? The mix, the the combination of the two. Well, I want to be able to do both. I want to be able to like incorporate some kind of like DJ dance hmm. part, but also the live kind of performance aspect where it's, you know, involving at least one or two other musicians and, and me singing and playing guitar or something else. But have it be 
both combined. So it's not just one or the other. You know what I mean? Right. But that's that's sort of the tricky thing because you know a lot of clubs are obviously more open to a DJ style and not so much to like a live performance thing. Um, but I, I haven't figured it out. But I also want to bring an element of theatricality to it. Um, hence the pictures sometimes you guys see floating around of me with my my red uh, Chinese lion mask on. Like I want to incorporate that. I want to incorporate like some cool imagery, lights. I mean, I, I realize that that it's almost not it's not enough to even to have like good songs. Like you got to put on the show. Right. Nowadays, musicians and folks really don't make money off of uh, obviously downloads or CDs or anything. So you got to just kind of make it an event make the the live thing an event so that people want to come and they they want to keep coming back and that's sort of where our livelihood is um you know so now now you have these signature sunglasses uh i see you online all the time with the sunglasses uh-huh. <laughs> i like that <laughs> i just wanted to say yeah. that <laughs> i mean you know it's like um it's sort of like sort of like assuming a character you know what i mean it's like you know we all kind of do our day to day thing, and then at least for those of us who who endeavor into the arts and music and stuff, sometimes you need to like you know kind of switch the uh flip the switch on and 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 turn into the roar as opposed to Steve you know cool all right well um is there anything else you want to throw in any other uh little behind the scenes things that are happening for you um I'm really excited about these remixes I got. I think I was telling you right before, Kitsadek out of Atlanta, Georgia, did this ridiculous trap remix of Touchdown, which is one of the other songs we got. Um, uh, Chuki did a, a dope remix of Emotion 32, which uh, we were talking about that that's going to be in that film. I'm waiting on like two other remixes that are going to be coming soon. And, um, you know, and, and then, of course, thanks to you, man. Thank you so much for being so supportive and, and, and doing what you do, man. It's like... We need more people that are out there kind of championing music because I feel like, you know, music has just become like such a, you know, almost like candy. You know, people are just so used to it and just kind of like just it so kind of like um, frivolously, you know what I mean? You know, when I first started listening to music, I, I, I remember getting the, you know, back then it was cassette tapes. And I would just, you know, spend hours just pouring over the credits, the lyrics, the yeah. artwork, you know, everything. It's funny, like, if, if you got, if, I guess it dates me. Um, I would make, before I would even play it, I would make a copy of the tape because I would play the tape so much that it would get eaten up eventually. Yeah. So I would, ha- I would only play the copy till the copy would get eaten up. And then I would have to, like, you know, I've bought in Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction so many times on cassette. I, I don't even know. That's but, funny. you know, I want people to love and appreciate music like that again. And that's 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 one of the things that I guess I'm a little kind of sad about with, you know, technology and, and, and the way things are now that people don't appreciate music the same way. Music is more in our lives than ever, and it's easier to access it, but it's not as, as um, precious, you know. Yeah, I hear you. I understand that. Um and and I get into a lot of conversations in relation to uh, how the whole industry has changed and um, and the goods and bads behind it. So the uh, one of the benefits here, for example, is for me to be able to, uh, at a very low cost, put a little studio together and be able to no, conduct an interview. Yeah. Um, th- but the bads are also that you know, in some ways, just about anybody can do music, uh, you know, with technology and, and not always you know with talent behind it. Um, but that's neither here nor there. But listen. Um, I think we're going to end the interview and I do appreciate you, you know, coming on uh, and, and saying hello and, and man. introducing Absolutely. some of your music to, to the world. And um, hopefully if a new projects come up, you'll come back on the show. Oh yeah, man. Listen, when, when I get, when I, when I'm about to drop it, man, believe that I'm going to give you guys some kind of exclusive, whether it's, you know, the first, the first spin on, on, on one of the tracks or the remixes, whatever, man, you have no idea how much I appreciate Everyone that takes even, you know, even a couple of seconds or minutes out of their day to like check out what I'm doing. I'm, I'm. If anything, I, for me, music is about connection uh, more than money, fame, or whatever. You know, you know. Some people, it's about expression and it's about connection. So, anyone that kind of helps that along, I'm 
eternally indebted to. So I'm very happy and thankful that you, you know, we were able to do this. And and absolutely, once it's the project is wrapped up, I will absolutely give something for the lounge magazine to like premiere or or, or have first or whatever because I would certainly appreciate this. Well, I want to thank you again, and um, I'm still a fan. Uh, I'm even bigger fan now that I got to know you a little bit better. You're you're thank very you, cool and down to earth. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, um, Steve, if you can tell people where they can find you, uh, and sure, um, on Twitter, it's uh, twitter.com. I am the Roar. SoundCloud, it's soundcloud.com. The Roar. Uh, Facebook, it's facebook.com. I am the Roar. And the official website is IamTheRoar.com, but it's not up. But hopefully it'll be up not too long after we, I guess, this comes out. Great. And I'm going to continue the – we're going to go into end credits. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of touchdown playing in the background. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thanks.